during the height of Beatlemania in 1964. A musical comedy called A Hard Day's Night was released to theaters. The film portrays 36 hours in the lives of the then popular group as they prepare for a television performance. This film was terribly successful, both critically and financially, and ended up being nominated for two Academy Awards. The film was produced by United Artists, and it was shot in black and white. The original plan was to release it in July of 1964. The entire film had to be produced over a period of about 16 weeks. But the shooting of the film only took seven weeks to do, and the total budget was an all-time low for this time period of a half a million dollars. During the opening sequence, the group is running, and George ends up stumbling and falls, with Ringo falling over him in turn. This wasn't intended, and George ends up ripping the suit that he was wearing, but he quickly recovers, laughs, and continues running. They ended up deciding to retain this shot in the movie. The title track for the movie was written entirely in one sitting by John Lennon on the night of April 13, 1964. And this is also the same day that he filmed the iconic bathtub scene. I guess that Ringo Starr is the one that really kind of coined the phrase, A Hard Day's Night. But John and Paul McCartney basically were in a race to see who would come up with a song for that phrase to coincide with the movie's title. The production company, United Artists, really didn't care anything about the movie itself. They were mainly interested in exploiting a legal loophole which would allow them to distribute the lucrative soundtrack album. In fact, they fully expected to lose money on the movie. But with the final cost of the film being about a half million dollars and the box office take being eight million in the first week, this movie is one of the most profitable percentage-wise of all time. The screenwriter, Alan Owen, put together the plot for the movie while following the Beatles around on their tour of France before they went to America. By observing them during this time, he created their stereotypes. John Lennon being the smart aleck, Paul McCartney as the cute and sensible one, George Harrison as the really quiet and shy reserved one, and Ringo Starr being very dim-witted and sad. He also relied real heavily on picking up their manners of speech and their daily routines that they followed, which he included in the plot of the film. Despite the comic elements, it was really a day-in-the-life look at the Beatles. Before the movie was released in America, some of the United Artist executives asked director Richard Lester to dub the voices of the group with a more mid-Atlantic accent. Paul McCartney came unglued on this. He was very angry and replied to him that if they could understand a cowboy talking Texan, then the audience could understand them talking Liverpool. Originally, the movie's working title was called The Beatles, and then it was changed to Beatlemania, and that was until Ringo Starr, who was exhausted after a very long day of work, made the statement, it's a hard day's night, and this was totally accepted by the studio. The concert sequences at the end of the movie were filmed entirely in one completely hectic day using multiple cameras and multiple camera angles. At one point, the sheer stress of the film under such conditions of filming caused a camera crew member to realize that he had cracked one of his teeth during the filming. That cameraman was Gilbert Taylor, and he decided to turn down future work with the Beatles in their movie Help in 1965 because of the sheer chaos that was involved in the filming. Now some of the Beatles are shown smoking in the film. This was pretty shocking to American audiences. While the Beatles had grown up in a tough working class situation where smoking was really common among youth, the problem being that the band was really marketed to Americans as being cute, sweet, 
harmless mop tops that love to wear matching outfits and joke around with each other. All this was very important because their long hair was seen by conservative Americans as being really dangerously radical. When they filmed the boys smoking, they hadn't really considered the impact on American conservatives. Due to a minor traffic accident, while driving his Mini, Paul McCartney had to miss several weeks of filming. Due to the deadlines that were enforced by the Beatles' busy schedule, the director had no choice but to carry on filming without McCartney. And to do this, he brought in an unknown actor who had a passing resemblance to McCartney. That extra was William Shears, and he was filmed primarily from behind and in profile. Following the completion of the movie, he signed away all his rights to his likeness, as well as signing a confidentiality agreement, which made him, sadly, disappear back into obscurity, apart from being mentioned in Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band by saying the one and only Billy Shears. While in the famous bathtub scene, John Lennon shouts help, and he plays with a toy submarine. In doing these two things, he unknowingly predicts the Beatles' next two movies, Help in 1965 and Yellow Submarine in 1968. It's been reported that about 15 minutes was cut from the movie, which included scenes of a London double-decker bus. The Beatles autographed the ceiling of this bus, and eventually the bus itself was purchased by a guy named Tim Lewis. In 1987, another fellow purchased the bus in completely dilapidated condition. They took the time to fully restore it, but the sad thing about it, the Beatles' signatures on the ceiling are long gone. After a long day of shooting in April of 1964, John Lennon ended up meeting his father, Alfred Lennon, for the first time in 17 years. On that morning, the father walked into NEMS Enterprises, and this is where the Beatles' manager, Brian Epstein, worked, and he was accompanied by a journalist. After explaining to the receptionist that he was John's father, she informed Epstein, and he immediately sent a car over to pick up John and the rest of the Beatles, with the exception of Paul McCartney. This meeting was terribly unsuccessful. The first words out of John's mouth to his father were, What do you want? The meeting lasted no longer than 20 minutes and ended up with a furious John ordering his father off the premises. This entire encounter was kept out of the newspapers by trading with the journalist who was tagging along for exclusive stories about the band later on after the filming. I find it interesting that the whole original first days of shooting, the train sequence, was lost because the clapper loader was really mistaken by fans at the station for one of the Beatles. While he was running to escape these screaming fans, he dropped several of the cans of negatives, ruining all the shots for that day. The film premiered at the Pavilion Theatre in London on the 6th of July, 1964. That was the eve of Ringo Starr's 24th birthday, and the soundtrack was released four days later. A Hard Day's Night set records at the theater by grossing an unbelievable amount during its first week. By 1971, the film had earned an estimated $11 million worldwide. Now, if you want to slide back into the early 60s, take another look at this film. It's an enjoyable stroll down memory lane. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.